Hey guys, Proper English here, and today we're going to take a look at something pretty special. Last week I developed a method for building a 5 tick pistonless adder, and we're adding that new method into the set of proper look ahead logic. And so this is one of my 5 tick adders, and uh, it's not the smallest one, but I like this one because it's super clean. And yeah, so let's get going with a speed test. I'm also going to show you a little bit about how this thing works. Um, with this new little trick, but yeah, first we'll check out the speed. And so, as always, we're going to carry across this whole thing, come down here to the 8th bet. We've got a carry out over here, we're not going to worry about that right now. And actually, we also have a carry in this time. In the previous ones, I didn't bother building one because I didn't need it for my purposes, but I thought, you know, what the heck, why not throw in it? And so, over here, we've got our little timing, so this is set to 6 ticks, that's because We've got one extra tick of delay over here that doesn't count, and so let's give it a shot. These no blocks should go off at the exact same time. it be five ticks. And there we go. Beautiful. So, this is a five tick pistonless adder. It's uh, pretty cool. So, now that you've seen the speed on this thing, let's jump into what I did to get this down to five ticks. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is take a look at how normal carry look ahead logic works. And then we're going to jump over here and take a look at the logic that I came up with that allowed me to build a 5 tick carry look ahead adder. And so one thing that we should remember is our output over here is not the final output of the adder. This is just an output that tells us what carries are going through. Okay, so this is a carry from bit 0, this is a carry from bit 1. And for example, if I turn both inputs on for bit 0, okay, so right now this line turns off, allows this torch to come on, and we're carrying from bit 0. But now if we're going to propagate, well, this is the torch that's going to allow us to propagate that, all right? And so we've got an XNOR back here, and that means if I turn one of these guys on, well now this output over here is off, this NOR gate over here can turn on, all right, and so now bit 1 is propagating the carry and that works because bit 0 generates and bit 1 propagates so both of these are off the NOR gate can turn on and there we go but now what happens when bit 1 is generating a carry okay so let's turn this on and we can see that now this is off allows this torch to come on and that is generating a carry from bit 1 but now this torch is off. It's no longer propagating the carry from bit zero. But the thing to note is that we actually don't need to turn that torch off. Okay, so the XNOR gate over here has an AND coming up, and the AND is what turns this torch off. And so if I just get rid of that block over there, then this stays off, and this torch can go on. And it doesn't matter because this torch is on, and this torch is on it makes no difference whatsoever and that is really at the core of what I've done because it allows me to control all of the propagation with NOR gates instead of XNOR gates and that means that I can control the propagation with one tick instead of two ticks and so let's jump over to my other demonstration and we'll see exactly what I've done all right, so let's take a look at this fancy half adder that I've got over here. This thing has three outputs. It's got a NAND output down here, and we can see we've got one input to this torch over here, one input to this torch. That's our NAND. All right, that's one tick. Then we've got a NOR gate over here, and so we've got one input coming up through here, one input coming up through here, and that's also one tick. And then finally, we've got our AND gate outputting up here, and that's just attaching a torch to the output of the NAND gate. And so all of our carry logic is going to be controlled by the NAND gate and the NOR gate. That means that all of our carry logic will start out with one tick instead of two ticks. And so let's try it out. We'll turn both inputs for bit zero on. That will generate a carry. So we can see this line over here, the output from the NAND gate is off, allows this torch to come on. And now, if we propagate that by turning one of our inputs from bit 1 on, 
Well, now you can see the NAND gate output is off, the NOR gate output over here is off, and this torch can come on. So that is carrying from bit one. But now, if we're generating from bit one, we come over here, turn this guy on, well, this torch is on as well, but it doesn't matter because, well, both of these are on. So what? They're both on. That doesn't do anything. We don't need to turn this torch off, and that's what matters. That's what allows this thing to function with one tick, okay? And that's the tick that I cut out from my previous six tick design, and yeah, it's pretty cool. So hopefully you guys followed along with that. I'm going to provide a world download of this adder over here. It's pretty cool. I'm happy with this one. Like I said, I've got a smaller one, but I don't know. I like the clean wiring on this one. It's pretty neat, nice and tidy. I have an idea for a four tick one. I don't know if it's going to work. I'm going to keep playing with it. The logic works. I got the logic down perfectly. Um, the trick is that I need to figure out how to wire it in, and that's where the serious challenge is. And, uh, and I'll be playing around with that. We'll see if I get it. If I don't, I'm okay. Five ticks is pretty cool. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you guys next time.